Welcome to Children's Church on Resurrection Sunday, and we'll be starting by singing Because He Lives. John 3, we're going to go ahead today and say John 3, 1 through 8. Just add a few more verses to it. So I'll give you a second to find your place. Thank you for working hard on memorizing these and for participating in the online activities on our children's ministry page. And if you do those, that will help you learn this even faster. All right, are you ready, Brecken? Mm -hmm. Okay, John 3, 1 through 8. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. John 3, 1 through 8. All right, thank you for saying that along with us, and I hope you keep hiding God's Word in your heart. Now we're ready for the lesson from God's Word. And since it is Resurrection Sunday, we're going to talk about how God's promises apply to the resurrection instead of Abraham. But let's go ahead and pray, and then we'll get right into the lesson. Dear Jesus, I thank you so much for this day, the day that we celebrate the fact that Jesus arose from the dead. He didn't stay dead, but he is alive in heaven with you, and I just pray that um, you would just give me the words to say. I pray that you be with the boys and girls and just keep them healthy and safe and um, just help them know how much you love them. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay, today we are going to talk about three promises that God has made in his word, and like we've learned from the story of Abraham, when God makes a promise, we can believe it. So um, the first promise that I want to talk about is the promise that Jesus made um, way back in the Old Testament before it even happened, the promise that Jesus made to send his son, Jesus, to earth. 
So if you'll look in Isaiah 7, which is back in the Old Testament, Isaiah 7, verse 14, I'm going to go ahead and read that. It says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So way back in the Old Testament, Jesus has promised through his word to send his son, Jesus, to earth in the form of a baby. It says a virgin. That's referring to Mary. And you, you probably remember the story of Mary and Joseph, how they made their way to Bethlehem to be taxed, and how they had Jesus there. There was no room in the inn, and so they found a stable, and that's where they, they had baby Jesus, in a stable, in a barn, and they laid Jesus in the manger, which was the place where the cows would eat from, and that's where Jesus was born. Jesus um, was born there, and God kept his promise to send Jesus to earth. So that's the first promise today that I want you to see. The second promise I want you to see is found in Luke, I believe, Luke 24. So if you want to find Luke, Luke is in the New Testament. We'll turn there. In Luke 24, I'm going to read nine verses here because this talks about the resurrection, and that's what we're really celebrating today. Luke 24, verses 1 through 9, it says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, the sepulcher is the, the grave or the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words, and returned from the sepulcher, and told all these things unto the eleven, and to all the rest. So in this passage we see early in the morning, some people were coming to Jesus' grave, the place where he had been laid after he had been crucified on the cross. Now, he was crucified on the cross, and that it was a horrible, horrible way to die. He was beaten so badly that he didn't even look like a man anymore. His beard had been plucked out. A crown of thorns had been placed on his head, and he was beaten beyond recognition. And he suffered that and died for you and I and paid for our sin. But after he died, they had put him in a borrowed tomb, in someone's tomb. Now, this wasn't a hole in the ground. It was kind of more like a big cave-like structure, and they would put a big stone and, and cover the doorway. But that's where they had put Jesus. And so early in the morning, these people were coming to check on Jesus and to put some spices and, and to do things that would honor his body. And they got there, and guess what? He wasn't there. And these two shiny men, probably angels, I'm going to say, were there and they said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. And then they reminded them of God's promise. So this is the promise I want you to, to hear. Saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. So here they're reminded that Jesus made them a promise that he would die and in three days he would rise again. And did God keep that promise? Yes, yes, God kept that promise and we are so glad that that promise came true. So the first promise we talked about was the promise that God made the promise to send Jesus to earth in form of a baby. The second promise was that Jesus would be crucified and he would rise again in three days and we see that that came true and the last promise i want to talk about actually hasn't happened yet it's the promise that god has made to us to return for his church and to rapture us out of here just catch us up out of here so for that last promise i'm going to read from first thessalonians 4 16 and 17. first thessalonians 4 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, 
and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So the third promise here is the promise that God has to return for us and to catch us out of here. It says the dead in Christ shall rise first. So that means the ones that have passed on that were saved, they're going to rise up first. And then we that are still alive on earth when, when the rapture happens here are going to be caught up and taken out of here. And this is a blessed, blessed promise. Now I want to make sure that you know that the rapture, when Jesus comes back to take us out of here, that's only for those that have asked Jesus into their heart and that have um, been what the Bible calls saved. Um, and how can I be saved, you might ask? Well, the first thing you need to do is just realize that you're a sinner and that you need to be saved. Realize that you've done things that dishonor God and that displease God. Um, secondly, you just need to realize that God paid for your sin when he died on that cruel cross that we talked about just a few minutes ago. And then you just need to ask Jesus and pray to Jesus and say, Jesus, please come into my heart. I accept your payment for my sin and I believe in you to take me to heaven when I die. And that's how we can know that we're going to heaven um, and so that we can be ready if the rapture does come or be ready when we, when we die. Because the Bible does say, it's appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. And so I just want to make sure that you're ready. That's the most important thing. And um, I just want you to think about these promises that we talked about today. The promise that God sent his son in the form of a baby. The promise that Jesus was crucified and he um, rose again in three days. And the promise that Jesus is coming back for his church.